morning. I'm Michael Pilot, and thank you for coming today, and welcome to Phil Rohde. I'm going to show you Mr. Leon's telephone poles. Now, Mr. Leon's very socially conscious, and right now the poles are socially distanced, but I'll remove the mask, and what we have are the just inexpensive Atlas telephone poles. Now, what Mr. Leon did was cut them up and make them look a lot better, which I'll show you how to do. It's very simple. He seems to think that he got the idea from George Selios, but we're not really sure if it's George's idea. But first step is you remove the poles from the sprue. By the way, this little sprue cutter is wonderful. For you. you can use knives, you can use a pair of, di pair of wire diagonal cutters work as well. We, we were trying to figure out what this, this little piece was on the pole, but we really couldn't. And anyway, that's easy enough to come up to. Now, the one step that all the poles have in common is that the plastic looks like plastic. And what Mr. Leon and probably George Salios did was take the pole and just take a razor saw or a court sandpaper and just scratch a wood grain in it. Nothing precise about it, kind of try to go in the general direction. I don't think they did, but I usually try to do the cross arms too. These things are pretty flexible and they could take quite a bit of. Now, this is one telephone pole. I might as well do all three. I find it easier to lie it on the table around that way. It would be just kind of groovy. Have little threads, they just come off the paper, get them off, and rub them with sandpaper, and then I'll just do all three of these all the time. Now, one thing I might point out, and I could probably forget to see is that something that they do in real life with poles, utility poles, is that when they are when they are put in the put on all put up on the land, they put them head to head. In other words, the two facing people go together, and the opposing two poles go out to tail. And that's what they do them head, head to head and tail to tail. And that helps, I believe, to relieve the tension on the wire. And now we've already improved the pole. Now, what Mr. Leon didn't like was the three cross arms. And for some reason, he liked it better with two. What you really do is you snip it off. And I snipped a little too much off, but that's how you do it. So I'll make this one, I'll snip this one closer, and I'll make this one a one pole. So now we have a pole with one, one cross. Arm. I'll take this one, and I'll make this one a two one, two pole. And that, that, that according to them, improves it. I don't know if it improves it, but it gives you a different phone pole. I have a phone pole with two, I have a phone pole with two different, two different workers. Now the traditional, the traditional Mr. Leon pole has these, the top one made shorter. And there's your pole. That's one configuration. I have to watch what I'm doing with cameras in a weird place right now. Camera, before the camera was positioned much better. Now it's I'm gonna do not live, I can do this. The camera is just in an awkward place for me to show things. But anyway, there's the there's the typical Mr. Leon pole. As you would imagine, there are many configurations of the bit. And one thing I could point out, they also give you with the poles, they give you little telephone boxes and transformers. And you could Take, for example, and do a double cross arm and put little strip woods and put things with wrapped transformers on them. There's all sorts of things. So let me show you some kit bash poles. Okay, here's, here's one where here's one where this only has three wires. They've kindly pointed out that you need three for the you need three for the three wires. You could make an old time pole where you only have two and cut them both symmetrical. That could be an old style pole, telegraph era. That would be another way to do this. Then here's a, I'll just take the single pole, I have another one, and I'll make that a 
vegetable pull like that. And that looks like that looks like stuff you see back in the old days. Now, I've I've been told that telegraph lasted on some backwards lines in the nineteen fifties. So you could justify telegraph on short lines. Railroads, I'm not sure if they still do, but operators learned them. These are like an old style pole. Now, while I'm cutting them, you notice the pole has a bait. And there's two ways of treating them. If the pole is the right height, then an easy thing is glue it on your layout and grate around it so you don't see it. However, if the pole is, you want the pole shorter, you can, uh, you can cut this off. And I have to cut diagonal and poke it into whatever your, poke it into whatever your theory is. Now, these little pieces are still useful. You can still use these, like, if you want to make a nice fence, I'll look at this, David's, David's bringing up the heavy light. That doesn't seem to have affected it much. But, but anyway, what you could do is you could take this. That, okay, well, looks like this. That light might be more effective than the other one. And that one, and everything, well, we, here we go. Good thing. Okay, now we have to get the camera back again. Good thing we're, good thing we're not doing, good thing we're not doing this. Oh, we get this set up. Okay. Yeah, it was, just, it was just right the first time. Then we moved it, then I made it just, that, that's much better now, thank you. But then one thing you could do with these pieces, is these make nifty fences. You could just put these up in a row and get strip styrene and make fences with them. You could make different holes. Failing that, these make good little round pieces for reinforcing, reinforcing point of buildings. But here are some, here are some other kit bands. Here's the, I like the one with the lower one down the bottom better. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my preference. This one is painted, so I'm going to put it over there. Here's one with four poles. You can take the extra cross arms and glue them on. Just use simply styrene gluing. Mm -hmm. Use any. You can use right any, up to the hem. Okay. Use any styrene yeah. glue you want. Yeah. Okay. And here's one that's painted. I'm going to keep those on the side. That one I glued one on the side. I think that these are limitless. Here's one I kind of like. That looks like an older one. One thing I've seen photographs of cities in the roughly the turn of the century, turn of the 20th century, where you might find like 12 or 15 cross arms. That was back in the days when telephones, I believe, every phone conversation needed two wires. Railroads had that too. So it wasn't com it wasn't uncommon to see poles with many poles with many cross arms along the side of the railroad. They tended to be short and not that close to the rights of way. One thing I remembered I used to love on a train, and I wish I could find another way to model this, is oftentimes the phone poles would be right about the same level as the windows, and you'd watch the wires drooping going up and down and up. Down. Sort of mesmerizing like the ocean. I've never figured out a good way to make wire that sags that way. I tend not to use the flexible thread because it's too strong. And also because for photographing real trains, I try to avoid telephone wires. And here's a chance to not have them on your layout. I usually think they distract rather than they end up. Other thing you can do, this is the only one I have, is when poles go to corners, they have they have cross arms. They come in that way. And telephone poles are made to fit many particular situations. There's, a, there's another one with a transformer on it. And that's basically the entire technique. Now, I should probably get into painting. I'm just, and I'm going to get some more things. I'm getting some more. Let me get into painting. And what I usually do, here's one that's, Here's one that's completed. Beautiful. And that'll show you what it's the That's the that one's all in primer. And I find the first step with styrene, which is always handy, get a can of spray primer. I like the Walmart brand because it's inexpensive and has a fine pigment. But lately I can't get the Walmart ones anymore. But believe it or not, I live where there are no Walmarts. I'm in one of those places where that doesn't happen. There's only a 
there's still a few of them in the country. But I found the Ace Hardware brands at the hardware store seem to have very good spray cans. But it's always good to prime them. Then once you prime them, it's a matter of using different browns and blacks and grays and washing colors on them. A little bit of white and just any kind of color you put on that's brown or earth color is going to look good. And you can kind of stain them, you can put washers, you can paint them, you can weather them to your heart. I think I have enough. I don't think the lights are wrong. That's up that's up to me. Now, now I should talk about painting them because I'm just dabbling away here. Here's a here's another raw one. That one was primer. Now when you get to a finished pole, what you want to let me try to hold it up in all its glory. Little things that really help are to do the ink to insulate. It only takes a minute. You take a small brush and I like to use a light green. This one is called Sea Green by Apple Barrel. Like that light, similar to the color that similar to the color those old glass insulators used to be. If you want to be really accurate, you could take a little gloss paint and put gloss over them because the insulators were shiny, shiny glass. I tend to use the light green for railroad poles, and I tend to use black for what I would call utility poles, holograph, electricity, things like that. I have a little detail which adds is little cross straps. Paint those with a black. Now, I don't like this is pure black and it's too black for models, and I don't have the right color. I usually use an off black. There's a shade called charcoal, which works really well, and I put a little rust on it. And there's your poles, Mr. Leon's telephone pole, which I believe came from George Celios and probably did. I know. No George had used them, but like many picks, this one doesn't stand up over my table, but this is glued down just fine. One of the things that I think a lot of these a lot of these techniques are that somewhere, somewhere along the line, someone thought of putting them. Quite possibly half a dozen people at different times and places came up with the same idea. Someone saw someone do it, and someone else saw someone else do it. And no one really knows where the idea started from. And there's a bunch of old one. One little thing I noticed that I could point out at the end. You notice this one, the pole is crooked. Okay, and I don't know if I did that from handling or from purposeful, but it's quite easy to quite easy to bend the pole and make them. Quite easy to make bend these poles and make them crooked. And photographs of old telephone telegraph poles show many of the poles were really crooked. And if you look at a line of poles, they rarely would set perfectly perpendicular. They were kind of many of them were kind of cockeyed. Sometimes because all different things would need alignment to get through it. But that's my simple technique. And if I learned it from Mr. Leon, I'll call it Mr. Leon's. Unfortunately, Mr. Leon no longer does much model railroad if he's moved on to the world of Elvis impersonations. But he was a good friend and I learned a lot from him. This is a nice technique just about anyone can use. Thank you for watching.